How's it going everybody? I'm Sean Pila. I'm Kelly Green and welcome back to the farmstead. So we are back at it again, folks, with the Farmstead episode four, the pests. So we shifted gears a little since the last episode. Humphrey and Isla are here at the farm living the dream, but after we dropped them off, we decided that we wanted to do a little bit of pest control and weed management before bringing in the rest of the animals. Exactly, the last thing we want is for our animals getting sick or being bit by fire ants, and I know what that's like, and it is not fun. No, it is not. It's a good thing our buddy Tom Dement will be helping us pinpoint a few of the pests and predators we may find here in Hawaii. We'll be also going over a few invasive species and viruses that are fairly new to the islands and ways that we can help to stop them from spreading. So let's, let's check, check it out. out. All right, it's looking so much better. We just spent the last two days clearing along the fence line. Uh, we weed whacked, we raked, and uh, it is looking 8,000 times better. All right, so we're here with brother Tom Dement, 12 years at the Division of Forestry and Wildlife. So Tom, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you guys do in your field of work. So hi, my name is Tom Dement. Uh, I work for the Division of Forestry and Wildlife and we do native ecosystem preservation and that uh, entails a lot of invasive species and pest control and management. Awesome, and what kind of uh, like invasive species and pests are you guys dealing with? Uh, there's little fire ants, slugs, rats, pigs, and the list goes on. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, yeah, the little fire ants, rats, pigs, the koki frog were all introduced to Hawaii's very precious ecosystem and just recently the Raimi moth and the avocado lace bug just to name a few but let's dive in a little into the fire ants you know tell us a little bit about the species what they like to eat where they like to hide and how we can control them from spreading. So the little fire ant um, it's probably known a bunch of different names here and if you're here long enough you know what the little fire ant is. <laughs> <laughs> so it's introduced in the 90s an invasive species probably came in with the nursery trade or something like that and it can affect your home farm pets kids you know you've probably sat on a few within your life yeah they're the worst she gets <laughs> I get worked <laughs> huge welts about a week or so <laughs> So awesome, um, we have a few different options on pest control, you know, you'll see all the stuff you can find in stores, you know, the Raid brand is very common, but for fire ants, there's, you know, this pretty intense stuff, Amdro, Extinguish, Ortho, but these are all really heavy chemical based substances that you don't want to use around your animals, you don't want to use around your crops and uh, yeah, fruits and all that stuff. And Tom has a uh, different remedy. And yeah, and I guess it's a little better for the environment and safer around right. animals. So this is more of a long-term approach. The, the product is called Tango. It's an insect uh, growth regulator, which basically the worker foraging ants will go and feed on it, collect it, bring it back to the colony, and it basically sterilizes the colony. It's kind of like a birth control for the And this okay. can take up to six months to a year? Yeah, so you treat about every four to six weeks and to see the actual effects of it, you're not gonna see anything for about a good six months. Yeah, yeah. 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 And what about this stuff, a little faster? If, yeah, if so I... this one is kind of a kill bait. You can broadcast it, the worker ants will eat it and they kind of die and the, they do take it back to the colony too, but this one isn't approved for any sort of food or not. Okay. 
crops or anything like that. So you don't want to be putting that into the food you feed your totally. friends or family. Or any type of water source. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, this is kind of a contact killer. And this one is similar to this one. Kind of a kill bait. Awesome. And then what are some of the ingredients for the tango mixture? Yeah, the tango mixture, we got peanut butter, which fire ants love. If you want to know how many fire ants you have, or even if you have fire ants, you can put a stick of peanut butter out in your yard or something and they'll get attracted to it. Because the fire ants like the uh, oily materials and fatty foods. Okay. Nice. Um, the oil is just kind of a mix matrix for the to spread it. Uh -huh. And the xanthan glum is to uh, thicken it up. Nice. Yeah, and then we got our mixing and measuring devices. Awesome, man. Yeah, so I guess we'll, you know, mix up a little batch. You can kind of show us the process and the different ratio. And we can also post the exact amounts on the comments below. And uh, yeah, just guide us through the steps and um, we'll mix them up and then maybe go into the banana patch and Hunt for some see if we can find some fire ants <laughs> and then we'll also do the application. Yeah, sounds good. Cool, man. Okay, so we're gonna mix a one gallon finished product. So we got our, we got our bucket here, 76 ounces of water. Oh, got some water right there. On our Put this on the side here. And so you actually make this for a group of people, right? You have some kind of a co-op that you guys create. Yeah, so I got a little treatment group that I'm a part of. And um, because to buy all the materials, it can get expensive. And then the time it takes to mix it, yeah. you know, it's not like you just grab this and you spread it and yeah. you're, you're done, you know? So yeah, yeah we pull up together and we, um, we purchase the materials and then we take turns mixing uh -huh. and then everybody comes and That's awesome. gets their uh, 32 ounces worth. So here's uh, the active ingredient, the tango. Okay. And three, how much are you putting of the tango? Three fourths cup. Okay. And that goes directly into the water. Yeah, that'll go into the water. So we got that and then we'll slowly add the xanthan gum. If you add it all at once, it's just gonna Take, gum up on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got four tablespoons of that. Sweet, and let us know too if you need us to like mix or whatever. Okay, once we get this in, then we'll... One. Very close in size. Yeah, Sean, why don't you mix slowly yep, yep. while no, I'm no, adding I'm the xanthan gum. Okay. <laughs> Kelly's gonna do the honors. Come around on this side. Woo, okay. Just on the side here and see... Uh, so I start now. Yeah, give it a slow mix while I add the xanthan gum. Wanna come take a look at this? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you're going to want to spray it in areas that you think fire ants are and into the trees because fire ants will go all yeah. the way up, you know, a hundred foot tree yeah. oh, wow. and the stickiness of this mixture will, you know, land on the tree and stay there and then okay. the fire ants will go awesome. get it. The more it's dispersed, the better chances of a effective treatment. Do you yeah. ever, I'm just pour like a glob of it in a certain area or you, you like to... No, I kind of... Evenly, yeah. Okay. So one of these, if you have a residential lot in Hilo or wherever, one of these will be good for, you know, a quarter acre lot or something oh, no, like that. Yeah. Okay, good to know. Nice. My dad was telling me, he's like, yeah, if you're gonna mix, mix me one. <laughs> Heck yeah. So I labeled one oh, dad. That, yeah, his dad's got his own bottle labeled. Oh, oh, that's Uncle Bill. Oh, yeah? Yes. He, we he got you, Bill. Enthusiastic talking about the um, <laughs> product. He just loves it. So the group I'm in, we buy in, we buy in bulk, and there's 12 members of the group, and each member pays fifty dollars for the year. Oh, that's oh, okay. not bad at all. That's yeah. so, oh, that's so affordable. Because and it usually lasts 
a year or more. Wow, okay, that's awesome. But yeah, that's why we kind of grouped up and did it that way, because if you're just gonna try to do it on your own, you know, you got high initial costs. Yeah. yeah, so what about like just the batch that we made? What's that running in cost? Oh. Like I'm four bucks sure. for the peanut butter, yeah, five the bucks for the oil. Was about four dollars, the oil was about four dollars. Yeah, maybe fifteen dollars, sure something like that. Fifteen dollars or so. Yeah. But we made a gallon, you know, so we got could probably treat a few acres with what we made awesome. or more. Manahuni water, ten bucks. <laughs> 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 yeah, and you're gonna want to spread this on a nice sunny day. Because if it's raining, it'll just wash away. Yeah, good to know. All right, so every time we bring in new guests or every time I go venturing off um, in the wilderness, whenever we come back to the farm, we'll use rubbing alcohol in these spray bottles. And we're just going to disinfect our boots just so we're not carrying any um, potential viruses, bunchy top and some other stuff. Sterilization. <laughs> sterilize the ants and sterilize our boots. All right. What's up, big boy? So, this is Humphrey and Isla. They were, the very first thing we had to do was put up this fence. It was kind of priority for us because we needed to move Humphrey and Isla up here ASAP. They're in a temporary living situation and uh, this was kind of the main goal. And um, yeah, Humphrey's about four years old. I think Isla is about six months and uh, yeah he's kind of a punk to people and to, to Isla sometimes but uh, he's my baby. All right let's go check it out. Bubber. All right so we spent the last three or four days kind of cutting away all the grass from the fence line and we kind of exposed the bananas and cleaned it up a little. And this is where I noticed most of the fire ants. Uh, when I was trimming some of the leaves, I noticed that they're kind of in the crevices and stuff. So we'll go walk around, we'll see if we can find any and then we'll do the application. So do they usually hide under like the peel here or? Yeah, I think they like the cool kind of dark areas yeah oh here's a few oh right there are okay i'm don't have my glasses <laughs> on so i can't really see them yeah i guess they call them little for a reason yeah <laughs> so we don't see a whole lot like a huge infestation but they are here and we want to make sure we can kind of manage the pest before it gets out of control which is kind of why we shifted gears we decided to do some pest and weed management before we brought in all the animals because we just don't want them getting into all this stuff. I want to make sure that they're comfortable. Totally. And, you know, it, it blinds a lot of the animals on the island. So best to treat before we bring them. Yeah, so if we wanted to treat this banana patch, yep. we're going to get it going. So do you, would you spray each tree individually or just kind of like a broad? You just kind of want to get it over kind of even treatment. Has some freaking distance. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you shoot wow. a good 15 feet with it. Oh my gosh, okay, so we don't even have to And go. like, you know, as we saw, you know, there are fire ants up into the trees uh -huh. all the way to the top probably, okay. so. So you spray upwards. Yeah, we well. just kind of want to. And so the fire ants are attracted to the bananas because they like to eat the fruit. Yeah, I think they're attracted to the fruit and just the environments, right? You know, cool, yeah, dark, mo a little moist. So you just kind of one really shoot like here, one shoot there. <laughs> what do you think? The dead leaves more so? Um, you know, the peanut butter is going to attract them. So wherever we put it, wherever you put it is where they're, they're going to find it. Okay. It's kind of an even dispersal, I would say. And it takes about 45 minutes to an hour for them to actually find it and start going for it. And then they're going to go back to all their friends. And so you guys can come back in about an hour or so. 
and kind of check it out. Yeah, you could oh, mark cool. a little squirt and then we can come back and see if, you know, how many fire ants you got. And that's kind of a good indication of your level of in infestation. Huh. Okay. If, you know, if you only got a couple or you got thousands on one little squirt. Yesterday when I was trimming back all the leaves, you know, I saw a little, not a whole lot, but we definitely want to manage it before it gets out of control. Do you think cutting back the dead leaves helps with managing? I think so. That's kind of why I, I cut the leaves, not just for aesthetics, but kind of, you know, it's less places for them to hide. And, yeah, um, and it mulches your um, bananas. And... Yeah. Totally. And it's a little more breathing room, you know, bringing the keikis a little better. Okay. Oh yeah. You think they can pick that up? You want to come check this out? So, took us a little while. I think the greener leaves held too much water and the drier stuff. If you take a look, we got like a solid 25 of them. And I can also see some of the slug droppings here. Oh yeah. That white stuff. Oh yeah. Oh, here's a slug. Oh, you found a slug. Let's check it out. Hey. <laughs> Wanna get in here, Julian? Ah. Oh. What? It's all that white stuff. <laughs> So that's oh, maybe the, that's their eggs. That's the slug. Oh my God, are you I don't know. That carries the rat lungworm disease. And uh, if you take a look, so it kind of looks like a snail without a shell. It has this hump on the back. And oh my God, uh, those are the eggs. It's got all this white stuff, and it could possibly be its eggs. So, what is rat lungworm exactly? So, rat lungworm disease is a parasitic uh, nematode that'll affect your uh, brain and spinal cord your so system. it's nervous system so yeah. it's pretty serious stuff very uh. serious and the the slugs are the vector and they have to come in contact with rats um, and then they'll carry it that's crazy so if any part of the um, slug is ingested you know you got the chances of getting it yeah so even like when their slug truck goes over lettuce and produce and stuff um, you can also catch the yeah, virus that way as well, possibly, right? Yeah, from yeah. the slug trail. So yeah. Make sure to wash your vegetables. Wash your stuff. And cook it. Yeah, cook the it. The foolproof is cooking it, but then you're not gonna get a fresh salad. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, we know they're here. It's not too bad yet, but we're gonna go and uh, there's a few different applications for uh, slug and snail bait. And uh, once we go back to the display table, we'll show you a few options and kind of the remedy that we're gonna go with, it's a little more um, user-friendly and uh, uncle-friendly. <laughs> Enjoyable. So we're back here at our science table and Tom and Sean are gonna talk about the next pest. Yeah, so just like the fire ants um, with the slugs, there's some really deadly stuff that you can buy over the counter. And um, there's also some stuff that's supposedly pet-friendly like the Sluggo, Sluggo brand, um, I guess it's, good to use around your household pets and stuff but there's another remedy that Tom told me about that consists of only one ingredient beer so how, do, how does this work exactly so super technical here you know you just get the beer <laughs> get a shallow dish pour it in and then you just place this where you think uh, you may have slugs. So good around the house and, you mm -hmm. know, small areas where there's heavy infestations and then the slugs will be attracted to the beer. I don't know if they smell it, probably. And they'll come up, crawl right in and then just kind of just shrivel Get up. drunk and drown. <laughs> <laughs> so does this actually work? Have you tried this? I've tried it at my house and it does work. Yeah? Nice. Yes. But it's good to place this in an area where you know there are slugs. Yes. So and like, then in the evening when the slugs start okay. coming out, you know, you can go more. check it and they'll be there. Okay. Nice. And some of the more like wet and damper areas with not too much light. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Is there like a certain time of day where slugs like to come out compared I to others? I think they come out evening, nighttime. Yeah. yeah. Okay. They call this the sandbagger special. <laughs> what does that mean? 
Sandbags. Oh, Sandbag is when you yeah. leave your beer and you Feed don't finish it. Feed it to the slugs. Uh, <laughs> um, oh, good thing I didn't take a sip out of the beer that I left. Yeah, I might have one slug. I know, I know. <laughs> okay. So yeah, that's um, you know a little bit of the stuff you'll see in stores. Some healthier alternatives. Um, we chose light beer because less carbs. And also salt. You can pour salt onto slugs. It's kind of cruel, but uh, that's also another option. All right, so along with the fire ants, the slugs, and the average pests and household pests you'll see around the house, um, there's also some predators and other pests uh, that we find here up at the farm, like those guys. Cue, cue the pig! Yeah. So stuff like rats, cats, even hawks can pose a threat to your chickens, dogs, other stray animals, mongoose. Um, those are all stuff that we want to kind of prepare for. And here's a few solutions. So if you've got a rat problem, instead of pouring a lot of rat poison around the property, you know, the old fashioned rat traps, throw some cheese on there. <laughs> um, another good solution for rats is cats. You know, you get some cats on the farm, they can kind of control the rat situation. If you have a problem with cats, uh, there's these cat traps. This stuff here, um, this is also used for mongoose, cats, and uh, you'll cast them in here. And, you know, a lot of people will drown them, but we're probably just gonna relocate them, maybe teach them how to surf or something like that. <laughs> and then <laughs> um, pigs, you know, pigs, they're a big nuisance here in Hawaii. So some strong fence lines. Some of our neighbors use electrical fencing to kind of help to keep those guys out of the crops. All right guys, so now we are on to weeds and diseases. So invasive species and viruses pose a threat to Hawaii's fragile ecosystem all the time. And most recently, the papaya ring spot virus, the rapid ohio death, and the one that we're concerned about the most is the bunchy, bunchy top. top. Yeah, so the bunchy top virus affects the growth of the banana. And uh, I actually don't know anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> but we know it's not good and it'll kill our entire crop. So we are gonna exercise caution and wash your boots often and spray it with the rubbing alcohol just to kind of disinfect our shoes. <laughs> All right, so bunchy tops probably the main concern for us, but fortunately the virus isn't here yet and we're gonna exercise caution, wash our boots, disinfect them as much as we can. And, uh, but I think right now our main concern is the guinea grass root balls. They're constantly growing nonstop under our fence line and our friend Rosa actually told Kelly about this new mix that uh, they used to use when she was working with the state. Yeah, so they use some vinegar, salt, and Dawn dish soap, and it's as simple as that. So I think you use one gallon of the vinegar, you use a full cup of the salt, and you use a quarter cup of the Dawn dish soap, and you combine it in a spray bottle, and then you just spray it along. I guess it dries out the um, root balls and kills it after a couple of weeks in the sun. Yeah, so we'll take these, hit all the roots, and we'll also run it along the fence line just so we're not having to weed whack like every other week to tame this stuff. And um, the Dawn dish soap is actually what the wildlife rescuers used to use to like wash the animals and stuff and the oil spills. So yeah. this is actually pretty decent stuff. And then the vinegar and the salt are all natural ingredients. So yeah, should we mix up a little batch here? Let's do it. All right, so I think it calls for one gallon of vinegar. Yep, there you go. All right, it's a little windy. <laughs> so we got one gallon of vinegar here. We're gonna go a cup of salt, which we will add next, and then we will add the Dawn dish soap last. There we go, one cup of salt. And for those of you who aren't familiar with this, eight ounces is a cup. I did not know that. But you learn something new every day. I actually like this spout. 
here. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of like and a funnel. A and then a quarter cup of Dawn dish soap. like mixing a magic potion over here. Okay. All right, I think that's it. Um, she didn't really tell us anything else besides the ingredients, so I think we just mix it up a Gently little. Stir yeah. It, yeah. And this is just a small batch on larger properties. You'd wanna use either a backpack sprayer or one of those big tanks that will go onto the back of your ATV. Massage it all together. <laughs> Looks good to me. Yeah. Should we try it? Yeah, let's try it. All right. Pump it up. I guess we'll just do this thing here. Yeah. Let's go find a, a good sized root ball. All right, so as you can see here, we spent the last three or four days weed whacking this entire area just to get the grass down. It looks better and it's easier to find the actual root balls. Right here, it's all coming up under the fence already. So I'm gonna go ahead, hit this really well, and then also just draw a line along the fence line. There we go better stream there. All right, I'm gonna hit this guy really good. And best to do this stuff on a sunny day, that way it just really cooks it. And the reason why we're using these earth-friendly products is because we're gonna have animals in here. We've got some sheep coming in, we've got Humphrey and Isla, also some chickens and uh, we just want to make sure the animals don't get into any of this stuff. extend a huge mahalo to our friend Tom for taking time out of his day to show us how he handles the pests. And thank you all for tuning in. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And stay tuned for episode number five, where we will be taking a field trip to Sugar Hill Farmstead, and we will be catching and transporting the livestock all, all by ourselves. ourselves. <laughs> so see you in the next video of Hui Ho.